Hello and welcome to sim.bc where right now is 1640 and today I've rekindled my hope in myself because I think that I can sing again. I know it's not like the biggest thing ever. It's probably one of the smallest thing in the world if you think about it, right? It's just me, one individual in one apartment in Sweden that's thinking like I can't sing because I recorded myself and then I recorded myself today again and I turned out like way better than expected. And why is the difference? Well, because, well, maybe because I slept three hours today, so I might be a bit biased. Maybe I'm not, you know, looking at all the details at the same level that I did before. Maybe it was because I mixed it and made some, you know, additional tweaks to it so that it actually sounded like way better. Not like out of tune better, but better in the sense that you took away, I took away lots of noise from, noise from the room and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> getting to the core of it then is that I slept three hours because I came up with a new sketch I want to introduce to the channel. Let's see if I'll do that. You know, it's a big project in a way. Lots of stuff that needs to be prepared. Um, I made a song and what more did I do? I did like so many things. I wrote the song and came up with the script. Yeah, and I came up with a marketing video for school. I, I came up with all of these things in my mind. And you know, it's you know it's dangerous when you're laying, lying down and you're thinking, I should go to sleep, right? And you're thinking really that, ah, oh, sleep, sleep is good. Sleep is bright. No, you know, bright people sleep at night. You see what I'm saying there? But uh, then you start thinking about all them things like how is the universe actually working? How is people colliding? And then you come up with a, hmm, maybe, yeah, smile. That rhymes with, I can't comp I can't, okay, okay, I can't come up with anything that rhymes with smile. Smile, bile, smile, sile, smile, dial. Anyway, dial, yeah, exactly. Smile and dial. So you do a dial and smile. Anyway, and you just think about that and you make like some lyrics before and some lyrics after and then you have something that rhymes and you're like, oh, I can make a song in here. There is a song in there somewhere, right? Anyway, mates, that's not why you're here, to hear me ramble on about my day, right? Because you can do that in any other video of your choosing. Just take one of my random ones, mates. It's sometimes I'm rambling on for the entirety of the video. Sometimes, well, not. Now, today, mates, we are going to talk about one of the first things that I added to this checklist of questions, which is consider the difference in previous knowledge. And this is something that we kind of... I've discussed before in I would like to say video five or six where we were discussing that well speak your speak your audience language and then I also took out the idea that well there's a maybe there's a huge difference between in context here between what you know as the lecturer and what your audience know maybe you're walking in right and you're looking out for your audience and you're saying well <laughs> you look like frogs or snails or anything else with like less IQ than five I can open a door I'm clearly superior to all of you you might be walking in with that kind of mindset, even though you probably don't phrase it like that, because if you do, then you have to question yourself, why are you a manager? And probably the person that put you in charge should question themselves, like, why did I put this person in charge as a manager or a lecturer? But maybe that is your view, right? Maybe that's your mindset. Maybe you're a PhD candidate, right? And you're thinking, I'm way above their league. I'm teaching in high school for some reason, and uh, I'm having so much higher expectations on my own work than I will have on there. So in my opinion, they're basically snails, right? Basically, yeah, snakes and frogs and stuff. In comparison to what? In comparison to the prime example of human evolution that is the PhD student of myself. So there can be a kind of a different mindset going into this. But before we're discussing that, of course, mate, we're going to recap. So tips and tricks for making an in-between question that's not too hard and not too easy and is interesting to your audience. As we have stated a countless number of times at this point, we know that people tend to drift both in and out of conversation when not feeling engaged, which makes them having a harder time understanding the context in which a question is asked and hence making sense that question a harder experience even though it objectively based on the others in the room might have been an easy one so asking necessary questions in order to keep audience engagement is one thing but it also needs to be kept short and simple not short in the sense that a short discussion but rather that the question takes 15 to 30 seconds to formulate and not 10 long minutes and simple not in a way that it should be an easy question but in the sense that it should have one objective to answer and not 15 different ones Ask direct questions, not aggressively direct, not abstractly indirect, but direct enough so that the audience knows that the answer you're looking for. Because if they don't, they might think that the question is excessively hard or too easy based on the miscommunication between speaker and subject. That will be like you and the audience. 
Posting one question at a time can help with as a, uh, can help as a lecturer to control the development of the discussion while simultaneously engaging the audience through their own interaction in the form of answers. Plus, since the discussion will be broken up into different voices taking part, it's less likely for someone to drift out or completely fall asleep during a presentation of a subject. Avoid leading and biased questions. No matter how much it gain you personally, it generally does not benefit the group. This approach might close out future perspectives that otherwise could make the discussion better and more vibrant. Remember to speak your respondent's language in order to to not alienate a part of your audience and make everyone feel engaged. Rather that you introduce new terms during the course of the session than being unsure if they know it from before. This is probably where we were discussing the idea of context as well, of learning. Sometimes people think that it's boring. Sometimes they will add a different twist to the term and spark an interest in an old term. This part is really hard and it's fortunately only gained through trial and error and error and error and error and error. Use scaling whenever possible when it makes sense in order to make an easy question a bit more complex through adding another layer to the conversation and simultaneously making a hard question easier by letting the audience being able to rely on that. Well, this is just my opinion. This is just how I feel. When talking about metrics and grids, a general feedback is among the many sources of potential errors that can affect the survey respondents themselves, they sometimes misinterpret questions, respond in socially acceptable ways or give easy answers in hopes that a more interesting question is just around the corner. Try and not rely too much on your audience if they answer you with a yes or a no. Instead, try to rephrase the question so that the audience needs to show you that they actually understood or they actually do not. Take your question for a test drive in order to, you know, make sure that it works so that you don't just come in and you think that you have the best questionnaire ever or the best questions ever and then the audience just shoot you down by not understanding what you're saying Woo! so that was the review and we want we went there 180 miles per hour there but we got through it so adding a bit of context more here consider the difference in previous knowledge set the stage present the context control that to follow and know what you're talking about we all have different perceptions of what an easy or hard and good or bad question is based on previous knowledge as of the subject example of a phd student teaching in high school kind of covered in the speaker respondents language video though so that is everything of my notes out of the way, mates. Now we can actually start discussing the idea that and the point that, well, basically covering from last yesterday's video as well, the take your questions for a test drive is in order to make sure that the context here, right, in which you've been taught and in which you will be teaching or which in, you've been instructed in, in which you will instruct further is going to make sense. So, for instance, if I am a manager, I might make walk up to the team one day. Oh, so I just need to calm down because we don't need to speak 180 anymore <laughs> or 170. Let's say that so that you don't think that I will make a 180 mid through the video. If you are a manager and you walk out to your team, right? And you think that I am the CEO of this company. I'm just here in order to show myself to the working teams, to the working class, so to say, to the regular people in society, even though I'm up here when it comes to status quo in the company. But I've come down to instruct the team in order to make good internal PR. Well, public relations internally, but you get what I'm saying, making a good perception of the founder even inside the company. So you might come out and you think that, well, I know each and every wimp and, well, technical expertise and aspect of this company. Why? Well, because I am the founder, I am the current CEO, and I know everything that there is to know. I know eeny teeny little bit about everything that happens here. If you're going to walk out to the regular team, maybe someone is new, maybe someone has worked here for 40 years, maybe someone is a bit unsure if they want to keep working here so they're not that engaged, maybe the fourth one is saying, well, I don't know where I am in my life, that's why I'm working here, and maybe you have a fifth one that's thinking about studying again, in contrast to the one who just came from directly from studying. And you're coming in there and you know, as I said, everything about the company. You come in there and instruct them and all of them look like question marks after a 40 minute presentation of why you should do the thing that you're going to do. So why you're going to do the project. Why? Well, because probably you've introduced lots of terminology that they've never heard before. Either that they haven't heard before in the context that, well, you just made them up on the top level, you know, in TMT, top management team, right? Or in the case that you've been talking in such complex ways in their understanding, even though you thought that you put it very simply. You were just talking about the marketing department, the logistics department, the 
part department that you're at and the top management and the customers and the suppliers right and the branding and the copyrights that you have uh, currently and the well the solution that you have for this specific machinery and you thought this was all simple. I used to cover like easy stuff from all of them. But they have maybe, they've never heard anything that exists outside of their department in this corporation. Maybe if you work at Ikea, maybe you're only working in logistics, for example. And you're the team who works in logistics. Now rest in peace, Ingvar Kamprad, who is the founder of Ikea. He recently passed away. But let's say, for just for, you know, for example, that he were to walk down to the management team, you know, way before, right? Back in the day and start talking about the different departments at IKEA to the people who are only doing logistics. Even though he might have been covering really simple stuff, this team, this little logistics management team, would have been so confused when interacting with terms that they're not used to. So it not might be that it's intentionally hard or very complex for that matter, it's just that they don't know about it. Which is yet again why we covered in the summary, reintroduce terminology when you begin a class. If you're unsure if they know it or not. And if you don't, then make sure that you ask these control questions when you go through. This is basically applying all of them tips, right? But make sure that you apply control questions as you go through so that you know that the people that you're talking to are actually understanding the terminology that you have chosen to use. Because yet again, you might be doing this 40 minute presentation and you're like, so, any questions? And they're like, yeah, um, yes, yeah, scary. Well, uh, I only have a question about the, the beginning. What of it? But the entire thing? Okay, well, and, uh, and, okay, there's more. Yeah, uh, and the end there, it was not quite, I didn't quite follow. Oh, well, because, oh, okay, okay, Gary, it's uh, no problem. I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. Maybe it was the marketing department. Yeah, and uh, maybe there was something more. I'm not really having it strictly in my mind what it should be, but maybe there was something else that was a bit abstract that I don't can put my finger on. Oh, okay, so what was that? The middle part connecting the beginning and the end. Please don't fire me. You see what I'm saying here, that people are maybe not understanding what you are saying as the simple manager just because you're coming from the TNT right you're coming from the top management team and maybe these people at the logistics department have never heard about the other departments the marketing department the HR department the development department the science department the R&D department the top department the management department the distribution department the customer service department and so on and so forth as much as you have divided your company or maybe they have, but they've never actually talked to any of them. And maybe they don't understand the terminology. So it's crucial, right, that you keep in mind that there is a difference between TMT and operational level, right? The, the executive level and the operational level at the, where the staff is at. Where the people who are interacting with your customers or your suppliers are at. Because if you want to talk to them, if you want to convey a message, and this is the same if you want to convey a message or a question throughout of your corporate culture make sure that everybody will understand it and not just the tmt and the founder because that will not help anyone and yet again tmt top management teams because i bet that some of you have been drifting in and out exactly when i've been saying what tmt stands for and you've been sitting there like tmt what is that so yet again just explain what you're talking about throw it out there show them make them interact with it and ask control questions but yet again if we go back to the lecture hall you're a lecturer the audience is sitting in there Chances are, right, since you are talking about the subject, since you are teaching the subject, you will know a lot more about it than the people who, well, are there in order to learn the subject. You know, the people who generally don't know the subject. Why? Well, because that's what they're there for. If they knew the subject, why would they be there? So you just keep that in mind when posing questions that the terminology should be the same, right? Keep simple and plain English. Make it as easy as possible to follow for everyone. Otherwise, you will just be standing there having question marks in the audience, sitting there like... Uh, 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 and then they're afraid to ask for it as well, because they either think that it's super, you know, super easy stuff that you're talking about, since you're talking about it with such ease. Uh, or that the other people doesn't understand either and they don't want to be the one to break the mold. So, yet again, control questions. Keep in mind that there is a difference between you, who is the speaker, and the people at the operational level or the audience. You know, whoever is your audience, right? And that is almost always correct. 
So keep that in mind when you're posing questions. Otherwise, people will think that they're really hard even if they're simple questions because they just didn't understand them. And they might think that they're really bad questions because, yet again, they didn't understand them. Even though they might be simple and really good. Have a nice one, mates. I'll see you tomorrow with a bit of a ethical perspective on questions.